some lure builder instructions so the very first time that you open lure builder you can open it up from here or from this top bar and you will see the user interface and it loads then a default lure which is something it, it might change over the time and you can see on the left hand side command panel which is dependable on these tabs if you browse the tabs you can see that some commands changed at the same and uh, lure builder basic idea is that you work in these tabs from left to right so you start first with the profile and you can see your design in side view top view cross section and then in this 3d view which is a preview of the lure that you can rotate around the very first thing that you need to think yourself is what type of lure you want to make um, software cannot know that for you and you need to think some basic characteristic for your lure um, like length um, desired weight what kind of components you would be uh, installing to your lure what material you're about to to make it from and um, um, after that thinking work you can browse for available templates so here on this uh, area you have a drop down menu new lure new lure from template and you can see what is available you can see a little bit based on the lure name and length that whether these would fit to your purpose but basically it's all about that um, how much of components you would be needing if you're doing balance jigger for ice fishing you might enjoy this type of a template if you have something really extraordinary you might even want to start from very blank basis from these bodies which do not have any any swimming lips or any components and for practice reason let's make for example um, uh, bike lure I would start from perhaps this type of a 100 millimeter long long bream as you can see it's very simple it's hollow design having only eye cavities which will we will probably remove just for the practice reasons so let's say that this will be a hard bodied jerk bite that I will be manufacturing from resin or some expanding foam and I will be later on making silicone mold for this so I will use 3d printed prototypes to test the swimming motion and when I get that into a desirable state then I will be making that mold uh, from a, from a masterpiece I'm not happy with the lure length so this template that I'm using is only 100 millimeter long I want it to have a little bit size so let's say that this would be 160 millimeters long a bit over six inches and you notice that it also scaled the thickness value at the same so this thickness is wall thickness this will be hollow lure with three millimeter uh, thick walls um, three millimeters is actually pretty pretty good but that I can change to be three and a half or, or whatever value even though that the lure would be solid let's say that I would be using some expanding foam I'll be making the first pieces uh, hollow to uh, save a little bit plastic and 3d printing time um, as you note I already went a little bit further ahead um, you can control these views with your mouse so I'm using right hand uh, for my mouse and with my index finger I can grab into these design points or control points and with my middle finger or second mouse button I can click it and keep it down and panorate in these views any view works the same same way and with the scroll button I can scroll in and 
select the point where I want to uh, panorate. So I'm pressing now my wheel down and that also works in, in, in panorating the view. In each view you can see this kind of a shadow buttons that pop up when you take the mouse into the top right hand corner. You can use also these and click uh, zoom in, zoom out if you don't happen, happen to have scroll button. And you can also expand each view to be bigger and second click reserves the um, original situation. In profiles you can see that you have this kind of a square red points and then uh, circular, circular uh, points and these uh, square ones, these are control nodes. I can grab into these with my main uh, mouse button, index finger button and rack them into a different position. And you can see in the 3D view that the model is actually changing. Um, there are some limitations in these control nodes. So this 160 millimeter length that we gave to the lure, it gives you limitation for these two nodes. So you cannot drag, I'm not trying to drag this node to the left, but it doesn't allow me to do it because it would make the lure longer than 160 millimeter. Same here in front, I just cannot drag it to the right or left side. You need to keep these in the position. So the square control points, let me zoom in a little bit. They define the lure profile so that the profile needs to go along this kind of a square point. And then you can see that for each square node, you also have a tangent line and round control nodes in each end of the tangent. And if you grab one of these circular uh, control nodes, you can affect the angle that how the surface and profile line is going through this uh, square node. And this is pretty standard method in any vector dr drawing. Closer you drag this handle to the square node, less that tangle affects uh, the, the curvature of the lure. And uh, further you take it, the longer the distance is that that this angle is, is then affecting to the, to the profile line. Pretty hard to explain, but uh, when you test it, you can, you can see the end result. Also for each selected handle, uh, you can affect into the smoothness. So here you can see that smooth is default value, but if I change it to corner, after that, I can make sharp corner to my design. But you need to be a little bit cautious because you can also do this kind of a ch shapes. And here you can see that this is a little bit like, um, how would I say, hard form to manufacture. You couldn't do, for example, an injection mold from hard steel out from this kind of a shape if your mold opening would be to this direction. And Lure Builder, it's not like a full um, CAD software. It cannot handle all these kind of situations. So if you see this kind of type of areas, you just know that you need to uh, need to um, um, take a little bit back your changes. If you're doing very complex design, complex form, you can also add new points to your profile lines. So clicking add point, you can just take your mouse again into the drawing area, one of the views, and you can see that the new node is created. It's not locked down into any position now, but when I click my with my index finger, it now locks into the position. And also you can select any of these control nodes with index finger clicking first mouse button and then you can remove point. Piece of warning, we do not have undo button in Lure Builder. That's something that people might find a little bit disturbing in the beginning. 
and um, that's just one of the limitations with the technology that we are using this is browser-based CAD software so we don't have all of that flexibility that we would have in a truly installed software um, some best practices about control nodes and complexity of the geometry you notice that I deleted the only control point in the belly line for this lure between head and, and tail but still we have curvature and my advice would be that keep the amount of control nodes in minimum sometimes you need to do some roundings and, and stuff that you need to add uh, multiple of these but if you check what I do here I remove the, all the control points that I can just leaving these um, the four ones that are, are required and even with these tangents I will be able to do pretty decent shape so for me this would be already quite good side profile for a pike jerk bite I wouldn't need too much of fancy stuff here on the between and if I reduce the size you can see that it's looking pretty neat already and just for practicing purposes I will be doing similar change also here on the top profile and here you can see that the top profile as default is symmetric so right hand side and left hand side of the lure they will be exactly the same if I drag one handle the opposite handle changes in, in similar movement and I will just remove these points and then I will be doing bit of this shape to the to the profile line also something that you need to avoid is making this kind of impossible tight spots so this corner would be how would you call it extending to infinity this would be really sharp and of course impossible to manufacture this would create perhaps two different pieces in the in real life and you can get this warning sign that this is not allowed in lure builder so you need to then change this back to uh, uh, original situation where those lines do not do not cross each other I need to zoom this a little bit down let's say that this shape would be okay for my purpose then we have also a possibility to affect the cross section of the lure and as you can see as default it's circle and in this view we are looking the lure from tail side towards the head you can see these helper uh, axles here so this would be the left side of the lure and uh, this would be the right side this would be belly and this would be back and my advice would be that you should think before you change this and typically this round shape is just fine for making making the lure shape so how lure builder works it's, it it tries to fit the fit this uh, circular cross section to both side profile and top profile and end result is quite smooth uh, you don't get any hard corners or or anything like that and typically it, it fits fine just for practice reasons if I change now one side you can make this kind of uneven shapes and as I said you don't have undo so correcting this type of a situation it's it's a little bit hard um, you have also possibility to fix this situation by selecting other side and you can see that uh, this point over here this tangled handle that I dragged it's in position 10 uh, dot minus 5.552 so I can copy that same value 
the other side. Let's check that it's it's not similar. Yeah, all the points they have similar coordinates. So now I'm back in the original situation, but it's it's really cumbersome. Uh, if you play with cross section, you might want to click it at least symmetrical. So the changes that you do, they affect to the both sides of the lure. And let me just go back to that exact situation where we were. Good. Sometimes you have a need to add uh, different cross sections to the length of the lure, and you can do it by clicking Add Cross Section. So as you can see, there are now two yellow lines. Another one is fixed to the rear of the lure, and new one you can just place into desired position and with click of an index finger first mouse button uh, you can lock it down to its place and now you can select either one of these the left one hand side is, is round and so is the other one but when I change now the other one let me just put this into a smooth form just to demonstrate that what this does let's play around with the with the form you can now see that I have a very sharp tip in the belly but that the rear end is still round and I can add multiple cross sections play around with them it uses that same form you can see that you can vary the lure shape but I would advise that do not use this in the beginning it it requires quite a much of experience to get this right and this is not very controllable method how to 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 form the lure if you have done something silly you can always remove these additional cross sections just select the one that you want to move and click this remove cross section and you can get back into the uh, original round shape one thing i forgot to mention is that navigation in 3d view is a little bit different compared to side top and cross section views uh, here wheel works similar way you can zoom in and zoom out but the center point where you are focusing the the zoom you can set it up with your index finger so the first mouse button it selects that around which position you want to rotate this lure or or view and second button my middle finger button then rotates around that point if i want to go looking for example uh, eye cavities later on i would click with my index finger first mouse button into some position where i have those components i would zoom in and then second mouse button middle finger button that would rotate around that area we will go that closer uh, through in, in component section now we have gone through most of the commands in profile tab it's time to save our design and this is really really advisable change your lure name to something else than new lure this is a default but this is creating lots of trouble for us so whatever lure number one prayfish what whatever name you will invent just type it in here and press enter and you can see that in the save lure you have asterisk mark and asterisk mean that you have unsaved changes in your design and i will click here it takes a while until a uh, server gets the command and when that asterisk uh, is removed you can be sure that you can now come back to this design whatever time you want then later on when you're doing changes to this design you will need to think a little bit that do you want to create a baseline for this do you want to have different variations and are you sure of the changes that you want to do if you are unsure and you would like to keep this 
uh, still available on the server. You can always do this save as copy. Click it and save uh, or wait for a moment and you can see that when this copy sign or copy text comes uh, uh, here you know that it's now saved and you will have actually two lures you have lure one and you have lure one copy and by doing this you can always select it from which baseline you want to work from if you would click again save as copy and wait for a moment you will notice that you will get lure one copy copy and it's again third different alternative that you can work from and now we are done with the profile tab we have saved our design it's time to proceed to bend but that will be another video